Hey nerds, just want to give you a quick heads up about these episodes. They were shot live at FinCon in Orlando here in 2018. Um, so the audio quick took like a pretty big hit, um, but we do have the video and those are available on the Royal Legal Solutions YouTube channel. So if you're interested, watch them there. They're phenomenal. The content here is awesome. The video is great. Um, it's just the audio that's a bit lower. So sorry for that. Um, it's the best we could do while we're live there at the event and we'll get better at that. But enjoy the content, guys. Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. On this Best Deal episode, we will explore the human side of real estate investing with a seasoned pro about the legendary best deal of their life. A deal isn't just the investment, it is also the person executing it. Stay with us and learn what it takes to be the best investor possible. Welcome to the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. I'm live on location here um, at the FinCon 2018. So welcome everybody uh, to what we got going on out here. I'm with my good friend Lucas. Uh, he works with Cozy and is a longtime real estate investor uh, himself. Done a bunch of properties. Going to share with us a couple of stories today of some deals that like went bad and then turned out to be good because he stuck with it and hacked out like a way to be able to turn it all around, which is congratulations to the world of real estate. If you stick with it, almost always time and enough effort is going to be able to turn a bad investment into a good one, unlike stock markets and other stuff, right? Um, so, Lucas, thanks for coming on the show, hey, bro. Thanks for having me. Cool Appreciate to be here it. with you today. Yeah, yeah I'm man. excited. Um, what do you, uh, we're going to go into like a couple of stories here today on it, but um, just for everybody that's tuning into it, um, what do they need to know about you to be able to get like a background of sure. like, where you're coming from in these stories? Yeah, so I, I am primarily a buy and hold investor. I, I invest mostly in single family homes and um, some individual condos. And uh, I like to keep them and hold them as long as I can and hopefully, uh, you know, give them to my kids. But uh, I actually got started in real estate uh, not because I wanted to be a real estate investor, but really because I like this girl and uh, I thought she was awesome. cute. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I totally happened to uh, yeah. ask her one day, I said, hey, you know, what did you do last week? You know, how have you been? And she's like, oh, it's great. I, I closed on a house. And at the time she was 23 and I just thought that was like the craziest thing in the world. And I thought, man, she's like super smart and super pretty, and I just want to get to know her better. So I did the next logical thing, and I just bought a house in her neighborhood to impress her. <laughs> That's awesome. And I was like, I'm going to do what she's doing. And, and she yeah. essentially bought a house and house hacked it and lived there with uh, roommates that she found on Craigslist. And I thought, I could do that. You know, why not? Yeah. So that was my actual first uh, investment property. And uh, I did buy with my heart instead of buying, uh, you know, with the numbers. And so I bought a, a house that was big enough that I could go find a bunch of roommates and just pack the rooms and they would pay my mortgage. And it worked fantastic. But as a whole, it didn't even come close to the 1% rule uh, for rent versus purchase price. And I... Uh, to this just, day. Just for like a second, just for like yeah. tuning in. So one percent rule right. means. So if you bought a house that was two hundred thousand dollars, you should be able to get two uh, two thousand dollars in rent every single month in order to at least cover your costs and then make a little bit of money. Uh, it's hard to find those uh, in major metro areas. You typically have to go outside the city, uh, and this was like right downtown Capitol Hill, DC, and and just wasn't going to happen, right? There wasn't a house in that neighborhood for that, but the. The well, real market honest, was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you weren't really chasing the 1% rule. No. You're chasing something else. No, nope, I was chasing the girl. <laughs> yeah, and what's going on. So it's just totally understandable. I get it. I've been there. I know what's going on with that whole deal. So um, that's awesome. So you ended up buying the house. I did. Get, I lived there yeah. uh, lived there rent-free, basically. I lived in my own house, and my tenants paid my mortgage and, and then some. And it was great for, you know, three or four years until I realized this is kind of a cool thing. Like, maybe I can take the equity out of this house and go buy another one. And, uh, and then I did that, bought a condo, and then, uh, and then uh, that girl that I was trying to impress, we got married. Nice. So it actually did work. My, my master plan to entice her worked, and so she was impressed. Um, we ended up getting but married. Th this is by far the first time. <laughs> That I've ever heard of somebody. Yeah. And I got into real estate investing. For a girl. Yeah, for a girl. <laughs> and then I married her. And it worked. Which phenomenal to right. go with it. This girl must be incredible. Like, yeah, honestly, I think so. to be like, yeah, I mean, of course, like, you know, you married her. Yeah. I think, right? We've been married for 10 years and have a six year old daughter. That's so. phenomenal. 
Yeah, and all thanks to real estate investing. Thanks really. to real estate investing. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. I don't think there's yeah. any other way I could have impressed her more, to be honest. That's Just, a pretty big move. Yeah. Because, like, you're honestly talking about, like, a, a girl that's there and be like, you ready to invest? Because I'm ready to invest. I will buy another yeah. house. I know you have some houses. <laughs> I have some. That's like, right. We're going to make it. Yep. We're going to make this work. And do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was part of my problem is I bought a house based like location's good but it was I really wanted it to be like in her neighborhood yeah. just to be close to her yeah uh, and I know that sounds totally stalkerish but like if you know if real estate and brothers are then it did uh, but th- what I was going to say is that this property that I have and I still have to this day is actually not that great of an investment uh, from you know the normal standard so um, I the only way I'm actually able to cover the mortgage and then make it a really good profit is if I uh, pack it as a group house. And so I don't rent out individual rooms anymore, but I do look for tenants who live, want to live in community and they have groups of five or six and then they'll rent the whole house out as a whole and then they don't mind you know, paying six or $700 for a bedroom, their bedroom, even though they're all on a lease. And, uh, and then they share the common areas. And so doing that, I can actually, uh, on this property, I can actually get over five grand a month from this property uh, in, in rent. Uh, whereas if I just only rented to a single family, uh, maybe even a dual income family, I maybe would only be able to get like 3,500. That's awesome. So, yeah. and that covers my mortgage, actually produces about $900 extra a month, yeah. uh, which is great. Otherwise I'd be in the hole. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. I just want to take a check in with all the nerds out there on this. It's like check out what he did. Is that he ended up like going to get into a piece of property, took action on it to go ahead and jump into it, and went for it. And you know, so the numbers didn't work out totally on the front end, right? But he had the flexibility and like the stick to it miss enough to be able to find out like another option uh, into like what to do, right? So look, it's like finding out like how to hack it into a group home and like, cause there's some operational things you have sure. to know about that. And like, how is the function, how's this whole thing gonna function? Did you have somebody that mentored you and how to do that? Or did you uh, just kind of figure it out? You know, own? my the, my wife, uh, her sister was a real estate agent and was also an investor. So I, I called her and I, she was the one who sold me the house. And I was like, okay, you, you gave me this great house. Like now tell me what to do. And she entertained that for maybe a year, and then she got kind of fed up with my phone calls. So I, I, I didn't have anybody, and at the time, this was 2005, and there weren't a lot of resources. Like even, um, yeah, like Bigger Pockets wasn't even around. It didn't or what, exist. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it existed then. Yeah. And so I if started. If it did, it was still, still Josh <laughs> in his living room in his, in his underwear yeah. typing on a laptop. Yeah. So I didn't have yeah. any of that, and, and the only courses I could find were like gurus who wanted to sell me a $1,000 you know, booklet of CD-ROMs that were going to tell me how to be a landlord. And so I just read as many books as I could. Uh, NOLA's got a lot of really good legal books out there. But uh, I just, I went to the school of hard knocks and learned the hard way through dealing with sometimes five or six tenants in one house in a given year because I was running out the bedrooms. And uh, I got really good at it. I, and I like to, I like to be customer focused. So my tenants are my customers and I try to treat them with respect and decency and treat them as if they were paying my mortgage because they are. And as a result, I just started uh, getting a name for being a, a successful investor and all my friends and family would come to me and ask me questions and I thought, maybe there's something here. So I decided to start blogging and I, I created a website called Landlordology back in 2000. I don't know, blogging. It's still going on, landlordology. Right? Yeah, it still okay. is. Yeah. Uh, and I and the idea was that it would. Uh, it's like the art of landlording. It's just the teaching and the practice of best practices of being a landlord. And I was just pouring my heart out into it. And I was just trying to teach anybody who would listen. Um, you know, and I, I still remember like the day I got double digits in traffic. Like it was eleven people came to the site that day. And uh, and now it's it's doing a half a million a month, and and it's teaching over uh, four million people a year on how to be a landlord, how to be successful, and how to make money, how to be ethical, how to treat your tenants with respect, and um, and that website uh, shortly after I started it did get acquired by a company called Cozy, and I continued to manage it and work with Cozy to develop their product, which is um, landlord software. So between the two, Landlordology and Cozy, we we can teach you how to be a landlord and then we can give you the tools to do it for free so you can collect rent online and screen tenants and do all that as a landlord for free that's awesome yeah so like who's who's an ideal person for like landlordology and cozy mm-hmm. 
Yeah, typically just mom and pop landlords or people with one or anywhere from less than 20 units, I'd say. But typically, you know, we see people who are just getting started. They either inherited a property or just wanted to get in and found one and they're not sure what to do, right? And it was uh, the ideal audience are people that used to be me. Like, I didn't know what to do. I wish somebody was there to, to mentor me and teach me. And that's what we're trying to do. So it's really, it sounds like it's something that you built from the ground up yep. with like your just personal experiences right. with it. And then you guys partner with Cozy on saying like, here's the tools to make it a little bit more efficient yeah. for how can you actually manage. Because you could manage stuff like on an Excel spreadsheet or like whatever way you want to do it, right? But yeah. like just like tools that Cozy provides, it sounds like working with your experience is like, okay, this is how you integrate the knowledge right. with the tools to make it you know, right. simplified for you. It's right? kind of like if you, if you ask me to, like, how do I go fishing? I could sit there and tell you all day long, like, this is what you do, but you're never actually going to learn it until someone puts a rod in your hand and gives you a boat and like takes you out on the water and says, now fling it this way and then actually reel it in and then you have a fish. And it's kind of the same thing, like we'll teach you how to be a landlord and teach you the best practices for that, but it doesn't matter if, if you don't have the tools to list your property, to screen your tenants, to actually collect rent online, to track your maintenance and your expenses. So. Uh, that's what Cozy does. That's cool. Cause it, so it really sounds like it's one of like a collection of best practices right. to put it together for right. you. And that you can't really screw it up because it's just going to walk you through it step by step right. of what it is. Exactly. Right? Okay. Yeah. That's really neat, man. I mean, I'm sure like your story is really cool. Uh, it's because like it's about how did you like hack out a system to make the investment work. Right. And then you're like, okay, and here's another tool that you can walk through about, you know, how can you landlord well. Um, but, you know, like you could still find the like, you know, there's still like a whole piece of it you're not trying to solve, which is like, how do you actually do house hacking, you right, know, into right, it? Right. Um, but like all the tools at least like kind of like guide everybody there. Sure. So are you still looking and doing real estate investments right now? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just bought a place in Colorado. Uh, this is my, an experiment for me. It's a, my first, uh, you know, short term rental. And I, and I actually did hire a property manager to manage like the ins and outs of the day to day check in and check out of the guests. But, um, that, that was an interesting buy because I did a lot of research on vacation homes in ski towns throughout the country, and I, I found that Vail, uh, Vail, Colorado, actually has one of the best ratios because uh, people will pay a premium during the ski season, and if I could, I figured out if I could rent the place for a hundred days out of the year, then it will cover all the expenses, including the mortgage and the property management fees and everything, and so. If I rent it 100 days, then the rest of the 250 days a year, I get to go, you know, hang out in Vail for free because awesome. it's covered. Yeah, I mean, so the numbers really worked out well there, which it wasn't that way in in some other cities. So that's awesome. Yeah. So are you using the same tools that you used before to do like your normal like uh, tracking for your rents as you are with like the vacation rentals? Or are you using something different? Slightly different. So okay. with vacation rentals, it's a different beast because you you have to. Um, manage a, a, a joint schedule across a multiple listing platform, right? So in order to really be successful, you have to list on Airbnb and VRBO and HomeAway and then a handful of other smaller sites. And, uh, you know, it, it, people come in from all over and they want to pay their deposit or they want to pay for their whole stay, like right up front and be done with it, right? Whereas normal landlording, you, you get a recurring monthly or weekly, however you choose to do it. Uh, rent. So Cozy's really designed specifically for more like month to month or long term rentals, but uh, shorter vacation properties. We ha we have a property manager who has like a built in system, much like Cozy, but designed specifically for for short term rentals. So no no designs on being able to like hack out short term rentals on your own. Just well, outsource it to no. somebody else for now. Yeah, because I, honestly, I don't want to be delivering to towels like at eleven o'clock at night when somebody's like just arriving and need to check in. So. That's, you know, that's not worth my time, but uh, somebody else would do it for a hefty 30%. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, Lucas. Well, I mean, I, I've taken, like, from, like, today's, like, talk with the two sure. of us, like, I've taken away some pretty, like, key lessons, I think, which is something um, just to kind of, like, bottom line. We always like to do, like, a lesson of the day. Of, yeah. Like, what do we grab out yeah. of the story? And um, just from talking to me here today, one of the things that I picked up from you, which was just the, just the fact of, like, there's, you know, you can get into real estate for a lot of different reasons, right? And I think you probably got into what people would normally be like is the wrong reason uh, to do Absolutely. it, and got into like potentially like almost like a really bad deal, right? If it didn't pan out uh, right. with it like could. the house hacking into yep. it, right? You still probably would have got married, but financially probably wouldn't have a good deal. So maybe yeah. it is a good deal overall. Yeah. So maybe we should take that as a well, lesson of the day. But, so that, that you know. bad property, yeah. um, I mean, I've had that now for 13 years, and I've been renting it to groups ever since. and. 
so I have a, a nice monthly income, but there's also like $400,000 of equity in that particular property. So even if it was a bad deal up front, if I sold it today, you know, I, I, I'd make a decent return on it. So, yeah. um, well, this is like really like the, the moral of the story, you know, in a lot of ways, right? Which is like, if you give it enough time and you can like explore the creative options, right. you can find a way out of something, right. even that you got in right. wrong on the front right. end. Because it's pretty tough to know sometimes, even with yeah. really experienced investors that we talk to and all the nerds have heard here on the show, is that yeah. even great people that are really savvy, mm -hmm. like end up in deals that go sideways sure. and have to come up with a creative solution. So it's not like, right. this is not like a new you know, piece nope. of it too. And right? there's so many factors you can't control. I mean, the economy being one of them. Like if there's a pop in the bubble or if it just takes a downturn, all of a sudden you lose all your equity and yeah watch out 2020 you come in 2020 is coming watch so out. yeah you know you can sort of prepare for that i mean you can certainly you know you risk yourself but at the end of the day like sometimes you just have to wait it out and and get to the end yeah that's awesome man. yeah so um it's just a, like if anybody wants to connect with you sure. and find out more about like what you're doing or like how how would be the best way for them to do yeah. that uh they can reach me by email that's lucas at cozy.co that's co cozy right on yeah, Lucas at Cozy.co, everybody. Uh, reach out, uh, find out what Lucas is doing. I think he's hacking out some more like secret stuff that he's not sharing with you guys here today. Um, follow him and uh, see what's going on with him. But Lucas, thanks for uh, coming in, man. Have a great FinCon, thanks. brother. Thanks, appreciate Pretty it. Good. Thanks. Guys, uh, this is Scott Royal Smith, of course, the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. Um, thanks so much for joining uh, in with us here today, guys. This is FinCon 2018. I'm going to be shooting some more videos with some other high-class people um, that are out here uh, sharing some really awesome content. So I uh, look forward to connecting with everybody here soon. Thanks, guys. That's all for this Best Deal episode, and I'm your host, Scott Royal Smith, with the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. When investments go good, they can go great. Your legendary Best Deal could be your next one, so keep at it. Thank you for joining us, and if you enjoyed the show, leave a review to help clue in those sleeping masses for what they need to know and what we all need reminders of. Do your good deed for the day, and I'll see you again soon.